Thanks for joining us here at noon. I'm Jim Stratman. Kentucky school districts can now see how they did last year after testing in May. Ahead of the results being released online today, Ian Hardwick has a look from the state's top education leader and the superintendent of JCPS. Across Kentucky, students still struggle with reading and math scores on standardized tests. But the Department of Education Commissioner Robbie Fletcher says those paint an incomplete picture of public education. The label doesn't matter to me. Student growth is where did you get the child and where did you take them? In measuring that change, a majority of Kentucky schools met the mark, improving reading and math skills. Though Fletcher showed concern for a decline in science test scores. At JCPS, which teaches about one in five Kentucky public school students, math improved while reading slipped back, though neither went above pre-COVID levels. Superintendent Marty Polio explained it's because of student apathy for standardized tests, missed classroom time from late buses, and the months-long gap between May testing and October reports. Kids don't have much of a skin in the game when it comes to standardized testing. Polio pointed out where the district succeeded, the gap between black and white student graduation rates closed, now just a difference of half a percent. At 88.2 percent, JCPS has its highest ever number of students graduating, an improvement of just over 8 percent from 10 years ago. Plus, 82.3 percent of students walk the stage ready for college or a career. What it means is we're getting our kids to the finish line, which is the mission um, and vision of this district and making sure that they are ready for post-secondary college technical programs, um, those type of things. So we're very proud of that. Outside of test scores, the state survey showed most schools report an increase in how safe students and families feel. When someone tells you that I'm going to allow you to take care of my child, there's no greater compliment. That reporting requirement was added by the state legislature in 2020. Fletcher and Polio both pushed for additional reports to hold school districts accountable. The department is working on adding more measures like how involved parents are at a school and how much practical real world experience students get outside the classroom. In Louisville, Ian Hardwick, WHAS 11, on your side. If you want to say if you want to say in what goes on the state's report card in the future, there's just one day left to complete the Kentucky Department of Education survey on that. That's online for you now at WHS11.com. Just click on the links from the newscast tab. We have new insight into how effective the JCPS weapons detection system has been this school year. Through a WHS 11 news open records request, we learned that since last school year, 10 total weapons were found. Seven knives, two stun guns, and one handgun were confiscated at PRP High School in February. If that makes a total of 11 when you include a gun that was found in a student's backpack at Mail High on September 11th, which was not included in those records. Now this week we spoke with one mom who pulled her daughter out of JCPS due to concern for gun violence on campus. As a mother, what are you supposed to do? I'm her parent, I'm her safety net, I'm her guard. I pulled out of JCPS. I felt as though JC, JCPS could no longer do anything for me as far as protecting my child. Gwyn told us 11 was a lower number than she expected, but said even one gun in a school is too many. The school district says its goal is to ev eventually have these weapons detective systems in all high schools and middle schools. Well, JCPS is looking to a new Kentucky law and the Jefferson County prosecutor to help crack down on chronic absenteeism in its schools. JCPS says a quarter of students had 15 or more unexcused absences last school year. This past legislative session, Kentucky lawmakers passed a new bill that would punish the parents and guardians of these students with a $500 fine or even jail time. We spoke with one JCPS parent who says their daughter had 12 absences from sickness and other life events, resulting in a call from a school staff member over truancies. He told us that he finds that law excessive. The idea of dragging parents into court is just not a very good look, um, you know, at, at, especially at like something like 15 over the course of a year. Um, I do think it would just act, you know, make the problem a lot worse. Jefferson County Attorney Mike O'Connell's office will prosecute, calling the law an eye opener. This week, 22 JCPS cases are being referred concerning this issue. Meteorologist Sam Gabrielli 
is here in studio with us. Sam, it is another picture perfect day out there. You've got the easiest job in the city right now. Just isn't telling it, people about the nice weather. I know, isn't it a great, Jim? You know, on days like this, it makes our lives difficult as broadcast meteorologists. We have to find different graphics to uh, fill the time because all we can talk about is just how gorgeous it is outside over and over again. But overall, we're looking pretty smooth. I think everybody's happy with the weather forecast. 72 degrees. We've seen our fair share of rain lately, of course, with all that rainfall that we saw over the course of last weekend and late last week from Hellions Remnants and now we can go ahead and really enjoy a great afternoon unfolding for us so far. Low 70s in the city and uh, the remainder of Kentucky and looking pretty darn good at this hour. Lexington 73, our friends in Indianapolis almost at 70, but the remainder of us are still uh, hovering in the low 70s across the Ohio Valley. So today 78 most likely in Louisville and notice the patio forecast bringing in some gorgeous weather. Maybe have some friends or family moving in town here here to enjoy a great afternoon uh, to be really soaking in that sunshine on the deck. We have plenty of sunshine ahead of us even into the day Sunday. If you're looking to be booking those eve or those uh, weekend plans, I'm also talking about some 80 degree temperatures into the course of the weekend, and I'll let you know if there's any kind of chance for rainfall in the foreseeable future. Your full updated weather forecast coming up in a few more minutes. Thank you very much, Sam. We'll check back in with you in a few minutes now for the for third day. Tens of thousands of dock workers along the East and Gulf Coast are not working. These workers are responsible for loading and offloading goods like cars, technology and fruit that come into the U.S. Union workers at 14 U.S. ports walked off the job Tuesday. These ports are responsible for more than half of the nation's container imports. Union members want a 77% wage increase over six years and limits on the use of automation. United States Maritime Alliance represents the ports. It's offered a nearly 50% pay increase and pledged to keep limits on automation. Now, if the strike goes on too long, it could have devastating impacts on the economy and it could cause a trickle down effect locally in the auto body industry. Right now, collision repair shops are keeping in contact with their vendors to make sure they can get the parts that they need. Jose Alonso tells us how troubling it is right now. Mechanics and body shop businesses are keeping a close eye on what's happening with the dock workers union strike. Here in the Linden neighborhood, this shop owner says it's too early to tell if this will impact his supply chain. As the days keep going and the strike keeps going, I will start monitoring it more. Owner of Shelburne's body shop, Tom Whitney, says they get a weekly delivery of necessary auto parts. He has not received a notice from his vendor whether the East Coast strikes will impact import supplies from Europe. Whitney says he does get some parts from Germany, so he expects to hear concerns soon. We have, plan on talking with him Friday. He comes here on Fridays, and so that was going to be one of my concerns with him. We don't have a warehouse of supplies, so we rely on our suppliers to bring us the supplies that we need. Shelburne's isn't the only shop with concerns. Bluegrass Collision says they've already been given a heads up from their vendors on the strike's potential impact. They're anticipating some delays. They don't know what the severity of that is. Parts and service manager Derek McAllister says the auto industry is global. He says right now it's a wait and see situation. We, we just have to be very upfront with our customers and let them know, uh, you know, the reason behind this. They've told me that, you know, they could expect some delays um, to the severity of that. We don't know yet. So it's business as usual for now, but both shops hope customers will be patient if there are any future issues. Just be understanding and just know that we are not keeping your vehicle any longer than what we want it here. The shops say they are doing their best to stay on top of any changes. Now, in the past few days, Bluegrass Collision has noticed orders that normally take two to three days, currently taking six to ten days before they arrive. 